541 bucket loader from John Deere. These cylinders have been leaking for a while, but they finally give up the ghost. Got to replace the seals. The cylinder number will be stamped on it somewhere. Releasing the pressure to the cylinders by working the valves both ways with the engine off. Okay, lefty loosey. There we go. I got the persuader. If you get my drift. <laughs> That's going nice and easy. One reason I like to use these bigger pins. If you get lucky. It'll hold it. At this point, I thought I could pull the rod out of the cylinder by putting a strap and pulling on it, but you can't do that. There's an internal snap ring. You can pull till the cows come home. It ain't going to budge. So I'm just going to pick up where I took the whole thing off and brought it into the bench. Okay. Well, I guess we're going to find out how heavy this thing is. I'm removing the grease fittings, the zerks from either side of this cylinder. Uh, remember which one goes where because one's 90 degrees, the other's 45. Alright, here's the secret to getting this bad boy apart. It took me a lot of internet searching. I finally found the answer on a 2009 thread from tractorbynet.com forums. That's tractorbynet.com forums. This guy explained it beautifully. Once you remove the external snap ring, you've got to tap the cylinder head back in with a brass drift about an inch and a half. After you do that, inside on the cylinder barrel, you'll see a groove, and that's where that internal snap ring catches. The new seal kits have an orange filler ring that goes in that groove and allows the whole mechanism to come out. Fast forward a little bit. I've got the gland, the cylinder head removed, and here's that second snap ring, that internal snap ring. Look how, how big that is and how far it sticks out. That's what's got to be shimmed over the groove that's inside the cylinder barrel. There we go. That it's tapered. Tapered one direction. So in theory, I think this is supposed to go in like this. Here's a better view of that filler ring with the cylinder rod out. You're done with it, you can take it out now. You don't need it for reassembly. That's the theory. See Lefty Lucy up. Smoke coming out. <laughs> Just 
about everybody's got an iPhone nowadays. Hmm. That's not looking pretty. Let's see what I can do with that. I finally went inside and got my gun cleaning kit out. I've got all these dental tools that I use to clean the crud out of the bolt and all that. These things work great. They were able to get up under all the seals and you can get it out without scratching the cylinder head. You can see that flat wear bushing. It's split. I used that pick and just got up under one end of it and it's lifted right out. Sweet. All right, there you go. I'll be damned, it actually went. I know, I know, this is not the right way to do this. I don't own a drill press, or a press rather. And, uh, you know, it's what I came up with at the time. This is after three days of, you know, struggling. Got it done. And so, for all you professionals out there that are just cringing at this, I'm sorry, sue me. It worked okay for me. That's why I put clean towels here to begin with. Put a hose clamp over the internal snap ring, tighten it down, and then just hit the top of the cylinder rod with a hammer till it all went in. I'd use two hose clamps here. Yeah. Put the external snap rig on and you're done. Now I just got to try it out.
more to go. Well, the job's done. I got the seals on both the right and the left cylinders replaced. They're working fine. They're not leaking, as far as I can tell. And uh, I just wanted to put an after note on the on the video. This is not a job that I will do again. I, if I have a, a, a leak in the future, I'm probably just going to take it into the hydraulic shop. They don't charge that much. And frankly, they're going to do a better job than I do. The learning curve is so steep, and there's so many different kinds of hydraulic cylinders. Might as well let the guys that do it for a living, you know, do it. Uh, secondly, the time that I set aside for this was barely adequate. You know, it took me basically three days. Three days to do both sides. And that included, you know, going into town and getting the, getting the seals getting on the internet and kind of figuring out how to remove the the cylinder rod from the cylinder housing so you know unless you want to do it like i did just for the experience then you know yeah, just take it in pay somebody to do it they don't they charge like 85 bucks and lastly uh it's a job that anybody can do i don't have a i don't have a press for example i don't have a lot of fancy tools I've got a lot of, you know, box wrenches and, you know, this tools like that. I don't have a lot of specialty tools that I'm sure other people have. You can do this. You can do it on your own if you want, but uh, whether or not it's worth your time is the question.